G'day guys, we've got a microeconomics question for you today where we've got a firm with a production function k to the alpha, l to the beta. And from that production function, we've got to derive the firm's marginal rate of technical substitution and also find the lowest cost at which the firm can produce 1,080 units. So let's get started with part A of this question. Okay, so to find the firm's marginal rate of technical substitution, what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the relationship, the marginal rate of technical substitution is equal to the negative marginal product of labor or the opposite of the marginal product of labor divided by the marginal product of capital. So this can be found, hopefully you guys are already aware of this, of going the opposite of the derivative of the output or Q with respect to labor divided by the derivative or the change in output with respect to capital. Okay, so as the relationship suggests, what we're going to have to do first is we're going to have to find the, both the derivatives of the production function with respect to labor as well as respect to capital. So let's start by doing that. So let's go the derivative of our production function, Q, with respect to labor. Now this is going to be equal to beta times capital to the alpha times labor to the beta minus one. Cool. And now let's do exactly the same, but we'll do it with respect to capital. So dq dk is going to equal, where are we? A alpha times capital to the alpha take one labor to the beta. So from here guys what we're going to do is we're going to substitute both of these functions back into this relationship. Okay so from here then we're going to have our marginal rate of technical substitution is equal to the opposite of the marginal product of labor which is equal to negative bk to the alpha L to the beta take one divided by the marginal product of capital, which is alpha K to the alpha take one L to the beta. Cool. So what we're going to do from here, guys, is I'm going to uh, use a few index laws, specifically this one here, A to the N over a to the m equals a to the n take m to simplify this relationship. So what I'm going to get is I'm going to get the marginal rate of technical substitution. I'm going to keep my negative beta on alpha out the front. So I have the opposite of beta over alpha multiplied by k the alpha subtract alpha plus one, because negative take negative is a positive, multiplied by L to the beta take one, take beta. And then what I'm left with guys, is I'm left with negative B divided by alpha, multiplied by K to the one, or just k, l to the negative 1, which can finally be simplified to the opposite of b divided by a times k on l. So, finally from here, guys, I'm then going to substitute in my values for alpha and beta. So you can see that they're right here. So from here then, I'm going to have this is equal to negative beta, so beta is 1 over 3, so negative 1 over 3 divided by 2 over 3 times k over L. Now what you're going to find here is one over, negative 1 over 3 divided by 2 over 3 is the same as negative 1 over 3 times 3 over 2, which gives us a value of negative k 
K divided by 2L. So what we can say, guys, is at the end, we can write, therefore, our marginal rate of technical substitution is equal to negative K divided by 2L. And that is part A done. Okay, so on to part B, which is asking us to find the lowest cost at which the firm can produce 1,080 units of output. Now, to solve this problem, we're going to need two different equations. The first one being the production function of our firm, which is equal to, or which is, Q equals K to the power of alpha, L to the power of beta, or capital to the power of alpha, labor to the power of beta. We've also got a condition which has to be satisfied for this production cost to be minimized, and that is that the marginal rate of technical substitution has to be equal to the opposite of the wage rate over the return on capital. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the second function, or the second relationship, and we're going to set this equal to what we found to be the marginal rate of technical substitution in part A. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that the opposite of the wage rate divided by the return on capital has to be equal to the opposite of capital over two times the amount of labor that we're allocating. Now what we can also do guys is because they're both negative we can cancel out the negatives and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this so I have capital in terms of labor. So I'm going to move the 2L over to the left hand side and I get 2WL over R is equal to K. Now what I can do is I'm going to substitute this into my first formula because this is going to be a um, the relationship which links capital to labor when the cost is minimized. So I'm going to substitute this into my production function and I'm going to have Q is equal to, instead of writing capital, I'm going to write 2WL over R to the power of alpha, L to the power of beta. Now I can take that L outside of the bracket and make it Q is equal to 2W over R to the power of alpha, L to the power of alpha times L to the power of beta, which is equal to 2W on R to the power of alpha times L to the alpha plus beta. Cool. So once I've got this, I'm going to plug in my variables. Now this is obviously equal to Q, guys. This is our output. Now we know that our output is got to be 1080. So I'm going to plug in my variables and I'm going to get 1080 is equal to 2W. Now W, it says up here is equal to $4. So I have 2 times 4 on the return on capital, which is 27, to the power of 2 thirds times L to the alpha plus beta. Now, alpha is 1 third, beta is 2 thirds, so it's going to be 3 thirds or just 1. Cool. So what I can do now is I'm going to show you guys how you would go about solving this by hand. So if you're at a university or an institution which doesn't allow you to use calculators, which such as my one, you had to learn how to do all this algebraically. So it does help so you can understand what the hell is going on. We have 1080 equals 8 on 27 to the power of 2 thirds times L. Now 8 is 2 to the power of 3 and 27 is 3 to the power of 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of move this up here and I'm left with 1080 
equals 2 to the power of 3 over 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 2 thirds. Now like before how I like to use index laws, if we have a to the n all to the power of m, this is going to be equal to a to the power of n times m. So in this bracket we've got 3 times 2 thirds and so we have 108 on this is times L as well. So we have 1080 is equal to 2 to the power of 3 times 2 thirds is just 2 to the power of 2 which is 4 over 3 to the power of 3 times 2 thirds is just 3 to the power of 2 which is 9 times L. So L is going to be equal to We've got 1080 times 9 on 4. Or 2430. Cool. Now what I can do now is to find k is a lot simpler because I have this function here which is L in terms of k. So I can just substitute this into this function along with my two other variables and I'll be able to solve for k. So I'm just going to change colour to make it easier to see. So I've got k is going to be equal to 2 times w which is 4 times l which is we just worked out is 2430 divided by r which is 27 and we get a value of k is equal to 720. Cool. So these are the allocations of labour and capital that we're going to stick in to get our minimum cost. So these are the allocations of labour and capital that to produce 1080 units will make sure that we're keeping our cost as low as humanly possible. So now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this into what we call an ISO cost curve. Now, an ISO, let's just make some space here, guys. Okay, so an ISO cost curve, and in this case, is just our total cost is equal to the wage rate times the amount of labour that we use plus the, the cost of capital times the amount of capital that we use. So... This is going to be equal to the wage rate of $4 times the amount of labour that we use, which is 2430 plus the, the cost of capital, which is $27, times 720. And if you just do a bit of simple multiplication, you're going to find that the minimum cost to produce 1080 units of output is 29000 $160. Okay, so let's just recap what we did for part B here, guys. What we did is we, we had two uh, relationships or one, one function and one sort of condition which had been met for this cost to be kept to a minimum. The first one was our, if you remember, was our production function, which is this here. And the other one was that our marginal rate of technical substitution had to be equal to the opposite of the wage rate on the cost of capital. And so this is the condition that had to be um, that had to be fulfilled in order to keep cost to a minimum. What we did is we equated this to the marginal rate of technical substitution which we derived in part A, which was equal to negative K on 2L, and then we were able to get a formula which related capital in terms of labour. We then substituted into our production function and then solved for labour. Once we've done that, we then substituted it back into our marginal rate of technical substitution formula, which allowed us to get our capital allotment. Once we'd done both of these, those, we just put it into our ISO cost curve, which here you have the wage rate times the labour allocation plus 
the cost of capital times the capital allocation and that gives us the minimum cost. So guys, I hope this video helped. You know, if it did, give it a thumbs up. You know, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on these kind of topics all the time and a lot of people find them sort of helpful. But, you know, until next time, guys, just keep on practicing, keep bashing your head against the wall. Eventually it will fall down. But most of all, guys, just keep enjoying your economics. See you soon.